Hey YouTube, in this video I just want to talk a little bit about my HP T1510 Thin Client that I've used for a number of different purposes. I think I featured it in a previous video on setting up asterisk PBXs, but I didn't do a full video talking about the Thin Client itself. It was part of a bundle of e-waste that I got from a friend of mine in the Cincinnati area, an IT specialist named Jeremy Hendricks. And along with this T1510, he also gave me the Toshiba Satellite L455 that I use for the Copacetic Music Hour. That's my dedicated streaming laptop. And he also gave, in addition to that, a Dellwise Thin Client that I use primarily as a media server and as a data backup that's worked incredibly well now for years. I stream movies and documentaries. I've, I have all the Computer Chronicles downloaded from the Internet Archive on there using mini DLNA. I've had great, great success with that device. I really love Thin Clients. I think they're sort of like Raspberry Pis in a sense. I mean, they're small computers, but a lot of these have x86 processors and are almost as, as full-featured as a uh, PC. They're not, you know, as powerful as a desktop, but a lot of these don't just have small SSDs. You can put in a full SATA SSD, and they have, you know, enough ports on the back and front that you can do all kinds of um, interesting interfacing and data logging and all sorts of things. I've heard of people using these as weather stations. I've used them for PBXs. You can use them as media streaming PCs. They're small. They don't use much power. They don't take up much space. They're super easy to work on. I love them. This is, you know, a a thin client probably from around 2014-2015. You can get newer, better ones for 50 bucks on eBay. But this is quite quite good and it came at the delicious price of free. Right here I'm showing you this mess, the um, front of the thin client. You can see the power button there. Uh, it ha it's kind of nice on the front. It's got, got a microphone jack and a headphone jack. I have my little dongle and one of the two USB ports in front here for the Logitech wireless keyboard. And I have this connected to the internet, both through Wi-Fi and through this uh, Ethernet switch that I got in uh, 2007, probably, that is then connected to the router through this power line Ethernet system. So making good use of the power lines for a nice, fast, wired connection there. For a while, I used this as a PBX. For another period of time, I used it as a printing and scanning server with the, this Canon MF232W right back here. It was just useful to have you know, a full PC close to it for managing scanning because you know, I, I'd have to be down here in order to, to scan a document. But now I'm using it for a lot of other things. I've installed JPilot on this. I'll hope to have, you know, serial interface palms interacting with it. SimH, you could run, you know, you could run a web server on this, all kinds of different things. I mean, I am still using it as a scanning and printing server type machine, but there's, you know, a lot of retro computing applications and um, other kinds of demos I've done with it, like that TCP SARE demo with the WorkPad Z50. That's still back there, was done with this T1510 thin client as the, as the TCP server, serial server, arguably. Let me go ahead and um, show you the side of it. It doesn't have any fans. It's super quiet. It doesn't get really hot, though. It's pretty easy to take apart. I think it's basically one screw on the top there, and then you slide out this panel. I've upgraded it from 16, 16 gig SSD to a 128 gig SSD. And I also upgraded the RAM from four to eight gigabytes. That includes both system RAM and video RAM. So there's something like one gig set aside for video RAM, which is perfectly fine for a machine like this. It did take a little bit of finagling to get the, 
video drivers working. I'll have to document that further and then make a web page about it and share that in the description of the video. Let me just really quick show, let me really quickly show you the back of the thin client. There's PS2 ports, a um, Ethernet port, two more USB ports, a position for a um, uh, Wi-Fi antenna back there. Let me just get this in the light for you. There is a serial port, a VGA port, a DVI port. Uh, that's the power supply. And a full parallel port, which is super, super cool. I think you can just use that for printing, but it would be very exciting if I could interface something, fan, you know, use that as, as like a full 8 or 16-bit input-output uh, interface, parallel interface. So that is super, super cool. Let's see if there's anything else to show you. It has the nice stand. Mine doesn't have, I, I have a Wi-Fi adapter plugged in, interestingly, on an extra embedded USB port there, but I get, you know, better Wi-Fi reception with a full card and antenna, which I don't have. So thin clients, small, small, but not to be overlooked, Br small and spectacular, that's what I'd say for thin clients, highly underrated. I know with a Raspberry Pi, you know, there's all the um, GPIO pins exposed and you don't get that on a thin client. But if you want a small computer that can do so many different things and is, you know, re relatively powerful, it has enough RAM and storage to do a lot of interesting things, I'd highly recommend getting a thin client. I think one of the most exciting applications from a hobbyist or retro computing perspective would be to run something like SimH on this and simulate a PDP-11 or, you know, some other kind of mainframe and then, you know, connect a paper terminal or another classic computer as a terminal to it and pretend like it's the 80s and, you know, you're logging into some mainframe and playing Space, space War. I think that's what it was called. Space War, you know, one of those... or. Uh, some multi multiplayer game or text adventures or what have you. That would be very, very cool. But for practical applications, you know, you have media streaming, PBXs, a um, printing and scanning server, w uh, weather station, if I hadn't mentioned that before, all sorts of great things you can do with, uh, do with it. And just to wrap up, I'll show you a quick summary of the specifications here using NeoFetch. HPT 1510 thin client. There are um, 8 gig of RAM, but really 7 once you count the video RAM. And it has a Via Eden X2 two, uh, dual core 64 bit processor and VX900 integrated graphics, which were a bit of a pain to set up, but now that I've gotten them set up, uh, work, work pr pretty decently. And with that, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching. Please leave your thoughts on this in the comments down below. And like and subscribe as always. Have a great one.